Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. Recently, we got official word on the Season 4 release date. Dragonflight Season 4 is going to begin in just under three weeks, the week of April 22nd, 23rd. That's going to bring in a new season of Mythic Plus, a new season of PvP, and for the raids, we're going to be replaying through the three original Dragonflight raids, uh, cycling through them one at a time in a new Awakened format. It is still unclear as to whether or not that's going to involve any extra affixes like it did for the Faded Raids in Shadowlands, but regardless, we're going to be getting our victory lap season pretty soon. In other things from this week, Noble Garden is here, and even though it's halfway over at this point, I want to take a look at what's new this year, how you get it, along with a couple of tips. Noble Garden is only a seven-day holiday. It is not a two-weeker like uh, Love is in the Air was, so it's only up until Monday. New this year, there is a pet, a toy, a mount, and a handful of transmog. The pet looks like this. This is the lovely duckling, and it is available on the Noble Garden vendor for 250 chocolates, or it has a low chance to drop from opening the brightly colored eggs. So perhaps if you're lucky while you're farming the eggs for the duck, you might get it along the way, and then you'd have extra chocolate to spend on something else. The new toy is the Duck Disguiser. This toy comes from doing a short quest line that starts with the What the Duck quest in Razor Hill or Goldshire. Doing the quest line also unlocks your character one duck appearance to use with the Disguiser toy, and it has been confirmed by a blue post that that is intentionally character specific. So any character of yours that wants to use the Duck Disguiser and actually put on a Duck Disguise is going to need to do this quest line. And if we assume that you can only collect one new color each Noble Garden, it will take six years to get all of the Duck Disguiser colors on a given character. Blizzard has caught some pretty serious backlash for that, being a bit goofy and very much running counter to their account-wide everything philosophy that they've been touting for the future of WoW. I personally chose the Mallard color for my single duck color of the year. Uh, I don't think that this whole business is going to ruin my year, mainly because I'm kind of a collect-and-forget-it person when it comes to toys. The new mount for the year looks like this. This is the Noble Flying Carpet. And this, along with the new transmogs, comes from the loot-filled basket. So that is something that you can get once per day per character for killing the new Noble Garden boss. The transmogs in question look like this. There is a hat and dress combo, and then a shirt, belt, pants, and boots combo. You can receive duplicates while farming these, which is fun. You do not need to do anything special to unlock the boss that you kill, and you can do them on lower level characters, but if you want a chance at the mount, that character needs to be level 60 or higher to get that blue quality loot bag that can contain the mount. In order to spawn the boss, you need to find a large golden egg nearby and then drag it to the nest. The eggs are pretty big and hard to miss, but they do have a couple of minutes of a respawn time, and you can find, join, and list groups in the group finder to help make it a little bit faster to get a duck kill in. Since releasing this boss, Blizzard has hotfixed the drop rate to be a little more in line with the way other holiday mounts work in that you're going to have a stronger chance on your first account-wide kill per day, and they also bumped the overall drop rate of this mount up, perhaps in light of it only being like a seven-day holiday. <laughs> it is curious that this change is something that they hotfixed in a couple of days into an event that was only seven days long, especially when they've used that drop philosophy already for other events recently, from the jump, it's not like a new concept for them, so it's it's a bit baffling what happened. But in any case, the mount drop rate is pretty reasonable now, and you can leverage lots of alts to help you work on it. You're going to have a better chance in your first character per day, but if you have level 60 plus alts and you want the carpet, um, your, your best bet has definitely been to slam as many of them through it as you can. I've been doing 17 a day. I've seen the mount drop twice. Um, I'm just still doing it because I'm missing one piece of transmog. It's also a good time to check out the Noble Garden vendor for any other toys, pets, appearances that you might want from previous years. If you are grinding chocolates to go shopping on this vendor, I recommend binding the interact key and using that to loot the eggs easily. I found it much easier than doing it the old-fashioned way. And then one more fact about Noble Garden in the, the last gasp of the event. If you happen to be working on the Ember Court in Shadowlands, perhaps for the Shadowlands meta achievement, you get 300% extra friendship with the Ember Court guests during Noble Garden, so now is a really good time to be working on that, especially because you can do Ember Court every single day. And then we had some further news on the bullion situation from last week, which is the currency that you can use in Season 4 to get specific items from the raids. A weekly quest on the PTR is offering two bullions. At an item cost of two to three bullions per piece of gear, getting two bullions a week is pretty generous, and I hope that that stays. 
it's the last season of the expansion. It's kind of like the the school's out for the summer, you know, homework assignments. I feel like it's okay if we get gear reasonably quickly. This does not feel like the season to drag out a super slow gearing curve. So I'm, I'm hoping that sticks, but we'll have to see. And then as far as what I've been up to, I have been, as mentioned, doing 17 characters per day on Dayton Swift Plume for the stuff. I was lucky enough to get the mount after a couple of days of that, but the last piece of transmog is being sticky. <laughs> particularly nettling when you have like your seventh sun hat and you are still down the dress which is the nicest piece of transmog so i've got a couple more days in the event and i'm hoping it drops and then questions from this week potato lover wants to know do you know if we will be able to buy the two vault of the incarnates next used to buy the ascara traders audic with the new dinar i couldn't find confirmation anywhere so i logged into the ptr and i checked and no, they are not on that vendor. The bullion vendors have trinkets and weapons, and they have items with special combat effects like the Diurna Ring, but no luck on your otter necks unless they change it, which I'm not expecting them to. The slightly silver lining is that during Vault Week, when it is awakened, you will have a chance to get the necks the old-fashioned way, and maybe less people need them now because they got them the first time around? I don't know if that's the case, but at least the raid will be active again for at least one out of every three weeks. It's not much of a silver lining, but it's all I've got. <laughs> and then Faye asks, what would you say is your top five mounts, pets, titles? I'm curious because you've collected so much. Aw, shucks. I'm going to be stingy and pick three of each. I took a look at my collections and for mounts, my top three mounts, and these are in no particular order, the Ghastly Charger. This is a TCG mount that they have yet to give away for some kind of Twitch promotion. It is pretty rare. It is fairly unique looking. I like the undead horses and I like having one that flies that I can use in Alliance characters. And I like that it flies while going fairly straight and not being too big and flappy and swooshy. My second pick is my Soaring Spell Tome because this was one of the most challenging things that I ever finished to get a mount and because it's awesome looking. And then number three for mounts is the Mighty Caravan Brutosaur because this thing is the most useful thing ever. I'm very glad that I bought it in BFA because once you get used to it, it's hard to imagine living without it. I hope that they eventually kind of cave and add back in either this or another auction house mount that's available for people to get, even if it's expensive, on a permanent vendor because it just, it just seems unfair. <laughs> And then for my top three pets, I picked my Greenwing Macaw from Dead Minds because that was the first pet that I ever got. <laughs> got me into the whole topic. The Coastal Sandpiper. This is a wild pet that you can capture in Legion. And I like this because I think this is the cutest pet in the game that looks like an actual, okay, that looks vaguely like an actual animal and not like a caricature. And then my silver tabby cat that I named Kira for self-explanatory reasons. <laughs> For titles, my number one title was easy. That is the insane because it took a lot of work. I love it and it goes nicely with Inksy. I like setting up titles that have like minor versions of alliteration. So sharing the two, the first two letters of Inksy, Inksy the insane makes me happy. Same thing with Ma Walker, Molly Wobble, my Mistweaver monk. <laughs> uh, Loremaster is my second title pick. Similarly, because that was a really big project that I'm proud of completing. And then Crash and Thrashin' is the title that I put on most often after those two because that is how I feel whenever I am pretending to tank. Anytime anybody needs me to pull things in a dungeon, I'm just like a tumbleweed of chaos and questionable threat retention. <laughs> and that's been the week. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck on your noble flying carpets if that's a grind that you're still working on. I appreciate you guys. If you have any questions for a future news video, please leave them in the comments of the most recent one and include the word question to help me find them. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.